Hello, this is Saida from Visual Components. Today we will learn how to create an inline process component for process modeling. Let's go to the modeling tab and create a new component. For the purpose of this tutorial, we are going to use primitive geometries, but you can import your own geometries. Now that we have modified the primitive geometry, let's add the frames that are going to be used later on for creating the path. Don't forget to click on frame types to show the name of the frames while we relocate them. If you are asking why there are four frames, it's because the fourth one is the one that is going to be used for the resource location. Meaning, for example, the position where the human is going to stand working or where the mobile robot is going to pick and place components. Now let's start adding the behaviors that are needed, such as the interfaces and the path. It is necessary to have one in interface, one out interface, and one sensor interface, as well as two paths. One for the components that are coming into the process node and one for the components that are leaving the process node. Adding underscore underscore hide underscore underscore will hide the properties of this behavior. After setting the names of the behaviors, let's add new flow fields to the interfaces so the parts can flow from one container to another container. For example, in the out interface, the container will be the path out. In this case, the parts will flow out of the path, so the port will be the output port. In the sensor interface, let's add a processor field with the path in as the container for the parts. Once we have defined the interfaces, let's add the behaviors that we will need as the container, the capacity controller, or the signals that we will use later on. I will also add some statistics with the default settings. It's not compulsory, but is recommendable. Now, let's change the name of the Boolean signals that we will use and let's connect the power on signal to the path in. Let's name our second boolean signal as the transition signal for our inline process. Now let's define the path in connecting it with the capacity controller and the transition signal. This path will contain the flow from the start frame to the center frame, meaning from the beginning of the inline process to the process itself. The path out will contain the part flow from the center frame till the end frame. After creating the flow for the parts, let's define the component container properties. Don't forget to connect the capacity controller and set the location in the center frame where the parts will be contained. Now let's define the connections and ports for the in and output of the component container. As you can see, the flow will be defined from the output port of the path in to the input port of the component container. And from the output port of the component container till the input port of the path out. We have now added the process modeling behaviors. As you can see, is in the center frame where the processes are going to be visualized by default. Let's connect now the process executor to the transport node. Now let's add some basic statements so we can test our component. Let's create a test flow with transport in, delayed and transport out. Now let's add a feeder and a sync node to our flow now that the components are located in the desired position, let's define the flow lines. 
Remember to click in the notes labels to get the flow editor updated. Let's now run our simulation and check if our component works. Remember that we have a 10 second delay and it works. <laughs> Thank you for watching and see you next time.